My name is Sonia Spencer, and I've been a resident of East Palo Alto since 1965. Education isn't the only issue affecting low-income families in the Bay Area. Everyone knows that the Silicon Valley is going through a lot of change right now. With all of the development and high-tech companies moving and expanding here. More high-paying jobs is a good thing for our region, but also has its unintended consequences for many residents as housing and rental prices rise. According to the California Association of Realtors, the average price for a single family home in San Mateo County is over a million dollars. The rental price for a two bedroom apartment in our region, East Palo Alto and North Fair Oaks is over $3,000 a month. This means that a person earning $15 an hour or 30,000 yearly cannot afford to live in the community that they work in. Families have had their rents rised, raised excuse me, consistently every year, even though incomes are not going up. Many people have had to move out of the area, which causes instability for our children and leads to the gentrification we see today. Long commutes also commute also contribute to the traffic problems that impact us all. We live in the middle of one of the wealthiest areas in the country, surrounded by companies that innovate new ways for us to communicate and live. Yet, many of our leaders seem unwilling to tackle this affordable housing crisis in a significant way to help low-income families. I remember this community I grew up in. Our community was close-knit, a community where everyone knew each other. Until 2006, when everything started to change. Families were bought out by a very aggressive company, and the faces in my community began to change. Rents increased by 300%, and families who couldn't afford the rent hike had to leave their homes and their families. I remember when my rent, up, rent went up by $332. I went from paying a little over $500 to over $800 per month overnight. So tell me, by a show of hands, whom else knows of someone that has had a change in where they live because of the inability to pay increased rents? Thank you. We armed ourselves with information and with the help of East Palo Alto Community Service, Legal Services, we began to fight for our right to live and stay in our community. Unfortunately, we were not prepared for the slew of lawyers and we were not able to afford the long legal battles that it took to win. Still, some of us kept on fighting and kept on struggling. West Side, East Palo Alto, is where I saw the most of the people leave. Most of the people I knew left. For those left behind, life started again. Life started over. And those who were left, we kept on fighting for ourselves, for our children, and for our community. It was hard, and it was an uphill battle, and for the most part, we lost. By 2009, rents continued to increase, and more and more of our community continued to change. I saw the apartments we call home change hands four times, yet we still struggle to live. I've seen folks do double shifts, two jobs, overnight, odd jobs, just to make ends meet. I have seen when people were put in a position where they were forced to choose between eating, rent, and medicine. Since 1965, only three families remain 
from my original neighborhood. We are all waiting for that living wage to kick in, but even with this, many will still not be able to afford to live in this community. Every time I tell my story, it breaks my heart, but I still continue fighting. To the candidates, and we'll start with Mr. Otaki, knowing that the housing crisis is not just local, but statewide, what do you think can be done to begin to tackle this problem? Thank you. In San Mateo County over the last 10 years, over 50,000 new jobs were added in this county, but only 4,000 new housing units. That is the fundamental supply demand issue that we face. So what we're doing, for example, in Menlo Park is where we've got 3,000 new housing units under construction, half of which are affordable. In addition, we're working with Facebook in rezoning uh, a section of town so that 4,500 new housing units will be built over the next uh, several years with Facebook's help. And so that's what we have to do is to encourage new supply of Thank affordable you, housing. Otaki. Thank you. It includes, it will include 15 percent. Mr. Otaki, I'm oh, sorry, but your time is up. We don't have time to get questions from the community. We appreciate you have an opportunity to fill out a comment card and submit them to the table uh, where you registered and we'll submit those questions to the candidates. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Reddy. I believe it's the corporate, uh, the owner's greed that has resulted in all this, uh, uh, you know, doubling the rents. So we need to fight back and we need to ask for higher wages. That's the only way we can fight back and give them the rent they want. So let's go for $20 hour wages. <laughs> let's, let's build a new city right next to Fremont between Menlo Park and here. And we need to ask Facebook, Apple to invest in real estate, not just invest in uh, their employees and, and giving them $200,000 for a starting job. So we need to have corporations accountable. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Reddy. <laughs> Ms. Vincair. For 13 years, I've been working with the Fair Housing Law Project to protect affordable housing, including representing the residents of the Buena Vista Mobile Home Park and trying to save that source of affordable housing, which we're doing right now. Of the four candidates on this panel that were at the Realtors Association, I was the only one that spoke up for rent control here in East Palo Alto. I believe we... <laughs> I believe we should have state funding of affordable housing, including from our budget surplus, a housing bond, and tax incentives. But I want to turn to this race because you may think that the biggest difference between me and the other candidates is that I'm a woman. But the biggest difference is that I have had a million dollars of independent expenditures against me. I never thought that standing up to be an independent voice would provoke the mountain of mailers you've seen for Mark Berman and attacking me, but that's what's happened. And I will tell you, I will continue and I will be a voice for working families in Sacramento and not for special interest and I would love your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Mark Berman. So, so like I have done publicly, I want to take this opportunity to totally disavow the negative attacks that have occurred in this race. There's no place in it and I hope that every voter makes their determination of who to vote for based on the policy positions and the visions that we've all espoused uh, for this community. So, so I apologize to Vicky because I think it's totally inappropriate what's happened. Um, speaking of the issue of housing, and I've now lost 15 seconds of my time, uh, I think we need to increase the low income housing tax credit. I think we need to pass an affordable housing bond for the state of California, and we need to decrease regulations uh, that currently get in the way of people building housing in our communities. That's the way that we're gonna start to claw back the additional housing supply that we need uh, in, in Silicon Valley and across California. Um, I will kindly ask you please not to attack each other. Thank you. 
Mr. Cabrera. Free education is a right for all and for all ages. Free health care and medical support is a right for all, for all ages. And housing is a right for all people at all ages. Okay? We need to fix the whole idea of what housing is in this culture. It is a monstrosity. The idea that housing is anything but living in for families is wrong and immoral. More than half of all housing is basically for making money and profit. With corporations are buying up half, more than half of all the houses. We need to end that. Housing should be not for real estate and not for speculation. It should be for living in. Thank you, Mr. Cabrera. Mr. Barry Chang. I still have to say, for outside expenditure to attack Vicky Winker is just not fair, not right. And attack after attack, that's not right. Okay, number, number one. Number two, to control this, the rent control, I'm proposing to have a statewide rent control. Statewide, not only local, <laughs> number one. Number two, tax the wealthiest in California, the 1%, to help on the education funding. They are part of the community, okay? They are the product of the community. They are benefit from this community. They should step up. So that's why I'm asking Apple and big corporation to pay their fair share, okay? In human history, when they have, is willing to share with have not, there's a peace. When they have, is not willing to share with have not, there's a war. So this is a situation, we are, we are in the same boat. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Mr. Inks. Uh, yes, the question is formally posed as being a statewide issue, but I think the speaker clarified, you know, addressing the acute area in the Bay Area first, and I'm not sure that a statewide policy for, for uh, housing in the Bay Area and in the Central Valley would actually be, pr be, be practical. What we do locally in Mountain View is we have been very, very progressive on uh, uh, housing construction, Thousands and thousands of units have been built or are in the pipeline now to add to the supply as a means of ameliorating cost. I've also advocated streamlining the entitlement process, which is extremely burdensome and expensive to actually bring housing uh, to market. So the way to address housing is uh, supply and demand and emphasizing supply. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Casper Zack. And last but not least, Housing has been my highest priority uh, during this campaign. And quickly in bullet point, we need to reduce the barriers and the costs of developing new housing. We need to increase the low income tax credits for housing so that more affordable housing or subsidized housing can be built. We need to overturn the state preemption of local governments like the city of Mountain View that have inclusionary zoning. 10%, we require 10% of all units of new apartments to be affordable, but the state prevents us from enforcing that law. We need to change that. We are also, we need to work, the state needs to work with cities to encourage them to build more, like Mountain View is looking at building over 10,000 more units in the North Bay Shore. Thank you very Thank much. You.